Hello everyone, this is Swati, working as assistant professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Tundigal. In this lecture, we will discuss about the various configurations of transistor and its characteristics. This lecture will particularly discuss about the transistor under common base configuration and its characteristics, input and output characteristics. So first of all, what is a transistor? Transistor is a three terminal device, semiconductor device, which is having two junctions and it is also called as bipolar junction transistor because the current conduction is due to both majority and minority charge carriers. And uh, we have already uh, know that the transistors are of two types, NPN transistor and PNP transistor. So, and uh, as the current conduction is due to ma both majority and minority charge carriers, the transistor is also named as bipolar junction transistor. And here we, uh, we know that we have three terminals in a transistor. So we can approximate the transistor as a two port network where the two ports are considered to be input port and output port. And as we are approximating, we are able to approximate the transistor as a two port network. So we can have three types of configuration of a transistor. And the three types of configurations here are common base, common emitter configuration, common collector configuration. What is this common base, common emitter, common collector? And how did we get these three configurations of a transistor? So as we have three terminals, any one of the three terminal is considered as common between the input and output terminals, the or else between the input and output ports. And hence, we can have three types of configurations for a transistor. So now, we'll discuss what is common base, common emitter and common collector. As the name itself indicating, as we all know that the, the three terminals of transistor are emitter, base, collector. If the base terminal is common between the input and output ports, then the configuration is said to be common base configuration. If emitter terminal is common between input and output port, the configuration is said to be common emitter. And if the collector terminal is common for both input and output port, the configuration is said to be common collector. So, as we have three terminals, if I take base as the input terminal, then, sorry, base as a common terminal in common base configuration. Emitter is considered to be input terminal and collector is considered to be output terminal. That means in the three terminals, one terminal is considered as common. The other two terminals are considered as input and output. So in case of common base, base is the common terminal, emitter is the input terminal and collector is the output terminal. Whereas in case of common emitter configuration, Emitter is a common terminal and base is considered to be input and collector is considered to be output. And similarly, if you go for the collect common collector configuration, collector is a common terminal, whereas the base is the input terminal and the emitter is considered to be output terminal. So this is about the configurations of a transistor. So here, whatever it may be the type of configuration, as we all know that the major application of transistor is amplification. So that means it is used to perform the amplification operation. What do you mean by amplification? Increasing the strength of a weak signal. So in order to operate the transistor or else use the transistor as an amplifier, we are already know that we have two junctions in a transistor. That is one is emitter to base junction and the other one is collector to base junction. So here this emitter to base junction should be forward biased and collector to base junction should be reverse biased. So here whenever the emitter to base junction is forward biased and collector to base junction is reverse biased, then the transistor can perform the amplification operation. And one more application of transistor is, transistor can be used as a switch. So switch can have two modes, that is on, on state and off state. So here, 
So before going to discuss about this, as we have two junctions here, J1 and J2, which is emitter junction and this one is collector junction. So we can have three modes of operation of a transistor. We can have three modes of operation of a transistor. What are the three modes or three regions of a transistor? So here, based on the biasing, uh, based on the biasing provided to the emitter junction and collector junction, we can have three regions of operation of a transistor. So the first one is active region. First one is active region. Second one is saturation region. And the third one is cutoff region. Cutoff region. So here, so what I said, based on the biasing applied to the two junctions of a transistor, we can have three regions of operation for a transistor. Those three are active region, cutoff region and saturation region. So when the transistor is set to operate in active region, when the emitter junction is forward biased and collector junction is reverse biased. So when the emitter to base junction is forward biased and collector to base junction is reverse biased, the transistor is set to operate in active region. And when the transistor is operating in the active region, it can be used as amplifier. That means whenever you want to operate the transistor as an amplifier, definite, definitely it should be biased such that it should operate in the active region. And the biasing is applied such that emitter junction is forward biased and collector junction is reverse biased. So this is for amplifier. Now I said transistor, another application of transistor is switch. So the transistor acts as an uh, on switch when it operates in the saturation region. When the transistor operates in saturation region, when the same emitter junction is forward biased and also the collector junction is forward biased. So that means when both the junctions are forward biased, then the transistor is set to operate in saturation region. And when the transistor is in saturation region, then it acts as on switch. It acts as on switch. Okay, next cutoff region. So when both emitter junction and collector junction are reverse biased, then the transistor is set to operate in cutoff region. And in this case, the transistor acts as off switch. So that means here we can say that the transistor can operate in three regions. That is active region, saturation region and cutoff region. When the transistor operates in active region, it can be used as an amplifier. When the transistor operates in saturation region, it acts as an on switch. When it acts, operates in cutoff region, it acts as off switch. So, and uh, how about the biasing here? When emitter junction is forward biased and the collector junction is reverse biased, then the transistor is set to operate in active region. And when both the junctions are forward biased, transistor is set to operate in saturation region. When both the junctions are reverse biased, transistor is set to operate in cutoff region. So these are the three regions of operation of a transistor that I wanted to discuss. So the major application of transistor is amplifier. So always we will be taking care that and always the emitter junction is forward biased and collector junction, collector base junction is reverse biased. This is a thing that we have to keep in mind. So whenever we are providing the biasing, we need to connect the supply voltage, external supply voltage such that emitter junction is forward biased and collector to base junction is reverse biased. Now let us look into the common base configuration. So, so we have NPN transistor and PNP transistor. So common base configuration, what do you mean by common base configuration? The base terminal is taken as common terminal for both input and output of the transistor. Whereas the input is input terminal is the emitter terminal and the output terminal is the collector. That means in common base configuration, the weak signal whose, whose strength is to be um, improved or else uh, increased should be applied between the emitter and the base terminal and the amplified signal or else the output signal is taken between or is taken from the collector and 
base terminal. So that means across this collector and emitter terminal, sorry, collector and base terminal, we'll be taking the output and the weak signal whose amplitude is to be improved, now whose strength is to be improved is applied between emitter and base. So if you look into this circuit here, we have taken uh, NPN transistor and PNP transistor. So this is the NPN transistor. How can we decide this is NPN transistor? Based on the direction of arrow. As the arrow is pointing outwards, so we can say that never points in. That means NPN transistor. So that is emitter is N type, base is P type and collector is N type. And I already told you that whenever we want to use a transistor as an amplifier, always the emitter junction should be forward bias and collector to base junction should be reverse bias. So now we have we are connecting the uh, supply voltages such that emitter to base junction is forward bias. So that means as emitter is N type, we are connecting the negative terminal of the battery to the emitter terminal in order to forward bias the emitter to base junction. Whereas the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the base. Similarly, collector to base junction should be reverse biased, right? What is the collector terminal type? N type. So in order to reverse bias this, connect the positive terminal of the battery and the negative terminal of the battery is connected to base terminal. So this is NPN transistor in common base configuration. So here, in a common base configuration, the base is the common which is grounded. And uh, this is uh, this is PNP transistor. As the arrow is into the MA base terminal, so we are considering the, the, we need to see that the transistor is a PNP uh, is a PNP transistor. So again, the direction here. So now, as we all know that the directions. So as the direction of emitter current is outwards the base current and collector current will be into. So because we know that the equations of equa the relation between the currents of a transistor are IE is equals to IB plus IC. If IE is leaving, IB and IE will be, IC will be entering. So here in this case, IE is entering. So IB and IC are leaving. So this is the transistor connection of transistor in common base and Co uh, so common base configuration, both NPN and PNP transistor. Okay, so here we have to know, we have to remember that in the common base, as the input terminal is emitter, the input current is, so we are identifying the input output parameters. So the input parameters of common base configuration are input current is IE and the input voltage is measured between the emitter and base terminal and which is represented with VBE. So actually, we uh, the, uh, actually the representation of voltage will be voltage and the first terminal should represent the input terminal, so VE and the second, uh, 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 second letter should indicate the type of configuration. What is the type of configuration here? It is common base. So that is why VEB, but we have to follow the proper nomenclature and what is the proper nomenclature here? So among emitter and base terminal, which one is at higher potential? Base is at more positive potential compared to the emitter. So instead of representing like VEB, we should follow the notation, notation such that consider the uh, terminal which is at, at higher potential first. So that means as base is at positive potential, instead of representing as VEB, we should go for VBE. Actually, as it is base common base configuration, the second letter should indicate the type of configuration. But as per the nomenclature, so the terminal which is having highest potential, which is applied with highest potential should be represented first. So as B is at positive where emitter is negative potential, so we are representing as VBE. So IE and VBE are the input parameters, that means input current and input voltage, whereas Output is taken across the collector and base terminals. So the collector current is considered to be output current. And what about output voltage? VCB. Is that correct notation? Actually, collector is at positive potential, base is at negative potential. So that is why that term representation is uh, proper uh, or else correct. So that is why VCB, IC are the output parameters, IE and VBE are the input parameters. Okay, and we already know that 
the amplification factor or else we can also call it as gain. What is the gain? Gain is defined as the output by input. So here now I want to define the current gain in a common base configuration. What is, how can we define the current gain? Output current, it is defined as a ratio of output current to the input current. So in common base configuration, what is the output current? IC is the output current and what is the input current? IE is the input current. So the com a current amplification factor or else the gain, current gain of common base configuration transistor is represented with alpha which is given by IC by IE. Okay, it is defined as a ratio of output current to the input current. So these are, uh, and here, as we as we uh, look into the circuit here, this is forward biased. So we all know that when a diode is forward, so that means uh, uh, we all know that the transistor is nothing but a back-to-back -back connection of two PN junction diodes. So here, this is a transistor, NPN transistor or PNP transistor. So N, P, N, emitter, base, collector, right? So here this is nothing but J1 which is nothing but emitter junction and this is the collector junction, right? So here what I said in common base configuration, we are applying the potential such that emitter base junction is forward biased. When a junction is forward biased, so what happens? The depletion layer is very thin and it offers very low internal resistance. So that means that as the emitter junction is forward biased, it offers low input impedance and because why I am calling it as input impedance because the input is applied between emitter and base which is forward biased as it is forward biased it offers low in low impedance so that means in a common base configuration it has low input impedance whereas the output junction is reverse biased and hence the width of the depletion region will be more and offers very high resistance and hence it has very high uh, output impedance. So in common co common base configuration, input impedance is low and output impedance is high. And hence we can uh, this common base configuration emitter current emitter is the input terminal that you all know and collector is the output terminal and the input is applied between emitter and base and the output is taken between collector and the base that is ground. So here as the base is common, so it means that the base is grounded and hence the common base configuration is also said to be grounded base configuration. It is also referred to, it is also referred, uh, re, uh, referred as common base amplifier or CB amplifier or CB configuration. Okay, so let us see the operation of this one. So here this is an NPN transistor which is connected in common base configuration where the emitter to base junction is forward biased. This is emitter to base junction. This is forward biased. And this is the collector to base junction, which is reverse biased. Be uh, do, uh, using this supplies here. So this VE is the supply, external DC supply, which is making the emitter to base junction forward biased. And VCC is the external DC supply, making the collector to base junction reverse biased. So as this junction is forward biased, as we all know that the PN junction diode theory. So when a junction is forward biased, so what happens? So it is nothing but the back to back connection of two PN junction diodes, right? This is N type and this is P type and this is again N type and this is P type, right? So this junction is forward biased and this junction is reverse biased. As the diode is forward biased, so what happens? The depletion layer is very less or else very thin, the, uh, thickness, uh, the width of the depletion layer is very thin. Whereas, as the collector junction is uh, reverse biased, the width of the depletion region is very, uh, that is wider. So here, as it is NPN transistor, so you all know the operation, I'm not going to concentrate much on this operation here. So the width of the depletion layer at the collector junction is more, while at the emitter junction is very less because the emitter junction is forward biased and collector junction is reverse biased, right? So this is the depletion layer. As it is NPN transistor, on the N side, we have positive immobile ions and on the P side, we have negative immobile ions. Similarly, this side, this is P side, 
positive negative immobile ions and side negative positive immobile ions now let us uh, derive the some mathematical equations for the uh, that is a uh, uh, let us have some uh, uh, relation uh, that is a, a relation between the various current components of a uh, transistor under common base configuration what are those so here now we all know that uh, by applying the kcl we can also write it as ib plus ic because here as it is npn transistor the electrons which are the majority charge carriers of emitter will be repelled by the negative terminal of the battery and they are moving towards the p type base as the electrons are moving this direction what will be the current direction the direction of current will be opposite to the motion of electrons so and hence ie will be in this direction so where the electrons once the applied potential exceeds v gamma which is 0.7 for silicon and 0.3 for germanium so then what happens these will cross the junction and enters into the p type base and there the recombination takes place and due to which some current will be flowing and the direction of current uh, flowing through the base terminal will be into the base terminal let us uh, let me write once again so into the base terminal because even the base is p type so base the majority charge carriers of base terminal are holes which are again repelled by the uh, which are again repelled by the positive terminal of the battery so the holes will be moving this way as the holes are moving this direction the current will also be moving in this way so uh, that means the direction of current and the holes direction will be same so current will be like this and even minority charge carriers or electrons so the electrons are attracted by the positive terminal of the battery as the electrons are moving this way so the current direction will be opposite so that is why the current is entering and similarly collector current will also be entering so because here this is reverse biased and whatever the electrons that are entering into the base terminal will recombine with the holes and the remaining will be moving towards the collector terminal and they will be collected by the positive terminal of the battery because the electrons are negatively charged and this is a positive terminal so they will be attracted so as the electrons are moving this way so what is the current direction it will be opposite so it is so now i is equals to ib plus ic now let us see let us write the equation for collector current as the collector current is reverse biased there will be some current which is flowing due to the minority charge carriers let us indicate that current flow due to the minority charge carriers as ic not as it is minor um, as a min, uh, collector junction is reverse bias there will be some reverse saturation current flowing through the collector terminal which is represented by ic not as it is common base configuration let us represent this as ic b not so now we can write so some of the electrons will be combined here and the remaining will be coming out of uh, the base terminal and they will be entering into that so that is represented by alpha ie that is the current uh, the amount of current flowing through the collector terminal from emitter so that is represented with alpha ie plus ic b not so this is the equation for collector current this is the equation for collector current what is ic b not here reverse saturation current what do you mean by reverse saturation current it is due to the minority charge carriers as it is due to the minority charge carriers as we all know that minority charge carriers are less in number so ic b not is very much less than 1 and hence we can approximate the collector current as alpha into ie and hence i can define the amplification factor alpha is equals to ic by ie so this is the equation for alpha so here as we all know that for example let us consider only 5% of electrons are recombining with the holes in base region the remaining 95% will be entering into the collector terminal and hence we can say that the alpha value always ranges from 0.95 to 0.98 that means the recombination rate in the base region will always vary from 
2 to 5 percent. So only 2 to 5 percent of electrons will recombine in the base region and remaining 95 to 98 percent of majority charge carriers will be entering into the collector region and hence alpha can be defined as 0.95 to 0.98. Okay, so this is uh, and the remaining uh, uh, 2 to 5 percent of electrons are recombined with the holes in the base region. So this is the value of alpha and this is the current equation that we have to remember. This is the output equation that is a uh, collector current equation in common base configuration. Okay, where alpha is the current amplification factor or current gain of transistor in common base configuration whose value varies from 0 0.95 to 0 0.98 or else 95% to 98% of emitter current. That is about the common base configuration. So now let us see the transistor characteristics under common base configuration. Before looking at the characteristics of transistor in common base configuration, first of all let us see what are the various types of characteristics we have. What do you mean by characteristic curve? So transistor characteristics are the plots which represent the relation, relationship between the current and voltages of transistor in a particular configuration. It shows the graphical relationship between the voltages and currents and these characteristic curves are of three types. First one is the input characteristics. So these describe the changes in input current with respect to the changes in the value of input voltage by keeping the output voltages constant. That means these are the characteristic curves which are drawn between input current and input voltage by keeping the output voltage as constant and output characteristic curve. So output characteristic uh, curve is the curve drawn between the output current and the output voltage by keeping the input current as constant. Okay, And uh, we have one more type of characteristic curve that is uh, transfer characteristic curve that is current transfer characteristic curve. This is the characteristic curve which shows the variation of input current with respect to the output current. Now let us see the input characteristics. These are the characteristics drawn between the input current and the input voltage. So in common base configuration, we all know that input current is IE and the input voltage is VBE by keeping the output voltage VCB as constant. We all know that the parameters, right? Input parameters are IE, VBE and output parameters are IC, VCB. So we need to keep VCB as constant and we need to uh, vary the input voltage in steps that is VBE in steps or else uh, uh, the input voltage in steps and record the values of current and then plot the graph between input current IE and VBE. So initially we need to keep the VCB at 0 volts. Now what happens? So now we already know that so here we already know that when uh, uh, here the common base configuration base is a common terminal so n p n right so this is the base terminal and this is the emitter base and this one is the sorry. emitter base collector collector terminal right so here okay so this is the common base configuration so now we already know that this is the uh, input junction and this is the output junction so here what i am doing we are forward biasing this is forward biased and this is reverse biased. So what is the input current here? Input current is IE and the voltage drop across this diode is which is forward biased is PBE. So that means here as the emitter junction is forward biased, so the input characteristics of common base configuration are similar to the characteristics of PN junction diode and the forward biased characteristics. So what are the forward biased characteristics of PN junction diode? Whenever the voltage applied is greater than the cutting voltage, 
then the current starts increasing. So these are the characteristics of PN junction diode under Farber bias condition. Okay, so now here up to the cutting voltage, the value of current will be approximately zero. That means there is no majority charge carriers crossing the junction and hence the current is considered to be zero. Whenever the applied voltage is exceeding the cutting voltage, then the majority charge carriers can cross the junction and hence the current increases rapidly. So this is the, uh, that means as the emitter junction is forward bias, which is similar to the PN junction diode under forward bias condition and hence the input characteristics of a PN, uh, of uh, common base configuration are identical to the input, uh, identical to the uh, forward bias characteristics of PN junction diode. So that is why we have got this one. So now, now what happens when VCB is increased? So what we need to do, first we need to keep the VCB at zero and we need to record the values of VBE, increase the voltage in steps and note down the current value IE and draw the graph between VBE and IE. So it resembles the forward bias characteristics of PM mentioned right. Now, what happens if I increase the collector to base junction? So this process is to be repeated for various levels of output voltage VCB. So first initially we are keeping VCB as zero. Now let us increase VCB and repeat the same procedure and plot the graph. Now what happens if I increase VCB? So here we need to have a look at the concept called early effect. We need to look at the concept called early effect. What do you mean by early effect? So here now what happens when, collect, when the potential at the collector to base junction is increased. So this is N, P, N, right? So this is the emitter terminal, this is the base terminal, and this is the collector terminal, right? So now what happens if I increase VCB? So here, now let us have a look at this one. So this is ground. Let us have, this is a source resistance. Why we need to connect a source resistance in order to limit the overcurrents. So always we need to take the output across the load resistor RL and uh, collected to base junction is reverse bias, right? So positive terminal. Let us consider this as VCC and this as VE, this as RS and this as RL. So you all know that the current direction is IE and this one is IB and this one is IC, right? Now what happens if I increase VCB? So as you all know that base is lightly doped. Base is lightly doped. So now what I'm doing, I'm increasing VCB from 0. 0 volts to 5 volts. I'm changing VCB to 0. So how can I change this uh, VCB to 0 volts? By just increasing this one. So now my VCB is increased to 5 volts. Now what happens, as we all know that this collector junction is reverse biased and emitter junction is forward biased. So as a base is lightly doped, so we all, uh, as a base is lightly doped, so we know that the depletion region will more penetrate into the base region when compared to the collector region. So we know that doping is inversely proportional to the width of the depletion region. You remember this point, width of depletion region. So, as the doping concentration of base terminal is less, so the depletion region will penetrate more into the base region. So, what is this B type? So, and hence, what are the types of charge carriers we can have? We can have negative immobile ions on the P side, whereas positive immobile ions on the Inside. So, this is junction. As I have shown the difference here, the depletion layer is more penetrated into the base region when compared to the collector region because the base region is lightly doped. So, now what is happening here? So, now let us consider this is, uh, for now I am just removing this in order to make you clear. So, let us consider this is my width of the base region. This is my width of the base region, whereas this is my WB. What is WB? Width of the depletion region 
let us consider this as effective width of the base ratio. So now, if VCB is increased further, now what happens? The de depletion region will be more penetrated into the base region and hence WB will be increased. WB is increased if VCB is increased. Is it clear? So if VCB is increased, the width of, uh, width of the depletion region in the base will be increased. As we uh, double, now by, uh, by looking at this diagram, I can define W as W effective plus WB. Now let us write down the equation for W effective, effective width of the base region where the recombination takes place is given by W minus WB. Where this one is fixed, only this one will be changing with respect, WB will be changing with respect to the VCB. If VCB is increased, now what happens? This will be increased as W is fixed. So what happens to the effective width? Effective width of the base region will be decreased where the recombination takes place. As the place for the recombination is reduced, the rate of recombination will also reduce. Rate of recombination will also reduce. So which in turn reduces the base current. Base current is what? That is the current flowing through the base terminal due to the recombination. As the effective width of the base region where the recombination takes place reduced, so the uh, rate of recombination reduces and hence the base current is also reduced, which in turn increases the emitter current, which in turn increases the emitter current. So this is the, the uh, that means the variation of effective width of the base region with respect to the reverse voltage applied to the collector to base junction is called as early effect or else base width modulation. So it's still if you further increase this VCB one uh, uh, at one point of voltage, the effective width of the base region will become zero, which leads to breakdown of that junction. And that effect is that, <coughs> that phenomena is called as punch through. That phenomena is called as punch through. So now keep it in mind. So now what happens? So here, Due to that, whenever I increase VCB, due to the early effect, as IE increases, so with the less voltage of applied voltage, the current start increasing and hence the input characteristic curve will be shifting towards the origin, will be shifting towards the origin or else we can also say that as the collector to base junction voltage is increasing, the curves will be shifting towards the left side. Moving towards origin or else to the left side, we can call it as. So, in le now let us observe the output character, sorry, input characteristics here. These are the characteristic curve which are drawn at VCB is equals to zero. So, due to the early effect, when I increase my VCB to 8 volts, it will be shifting towards the origin or else shifting towards the left side. Still, if you increase, it will be moving towards the origin. So, this is the shift that you can observe in the input characteristics curve of common base configuration. So, the early effect is a major concept that we need to remember. Okay. So, that is about input characteristics. Now, coming to the output characteristic curve. So, the output characteristics are the curve drawn between the output current and the output voltage by taking the input current that is emitter current as constant. So again we need to do the same thing. Keep the input current at some constant value, increase the output voltage in steps and note down the or else record the output current and plot the graph between output current and the output voltage. Initially keep the input current at 0 milliamperes and uh, uh, do this procedure, increase the output voltage in steps and record the output current and then plot the graph between output voltage and output current. Taking, always you remember, I forgot to tell you while discussing the uh, input characteristics. So here, whenever you are plotting the characteristic curve, always you remember on the x-axis we need to take the voltage and on the y-axis we need to take the current. As these are the input characteristic curve, so the input voltage, take the input voltage on x-axis and the input current on y-axis and take VCB that is output voltage as 
constant. So, whatever it may be the characteristics, whenever we are drawing the characteristic curve, always you remember voltage should be taken on x axis and current should be taken on y axis. So, here now before discussing the, uh, we, before drawing the output characteristic curve, so we all know that the transistor should be in uh, in, uh, operating in active region. That means emitter to base junction is forward biased and collector to base junction is reverse biased, right? So, now first, here, now what we need to do is first, let us identify the current relationship. So, what is the current relationship we have? IC is equals to alpha into IE plus IC B0, where IC B0 is the reverse saturation current. Now, if IE is equals to 0, what happens? Then IC is equals to IC B0. Making IE is equals to 0 means what? Open circuit in the input terminal. Making the current means open circuit. Making the current 0 means open circuiting. Making the voltage 0 means short circuit. So, I am make, as I am making the input current as 0, I am open circuiting the input terminal. So, if IE is equals to 0, IC is equals to ICB0, where ICB0 is the reverse saturation current, which is very less. It is of the order of nano amperes. It is negligible. So, here, uh, and when IE is equals to 0, IC is equals to ICB0. Okay. So, now, here, that means... When, is, when a PN junction diode is said to be open circuited, when the junction is reverse biased. Is it or not? We have seen the ideal characteristics of PN junction diode. When it is open circuit, uh, when the junction is reverse biased, it acts as open circuit. When a junction is forward biased, it acts as short circuit. That means making IE is equals to zero means open circuiting the input diode. That is input junction. Means what? emitter to base junction is reverse bias and initially collector to base junction is also reverse bias means what here both the junctions are getting reverse bias and hence the region of operation is said to be cut off region so here these are the characteristic curves we have taken vcb that is the output voltage on x axis and ic of the order of milliamperes it is taken on the y axis so, when IE is equals to 0, a small amount of current is flowing and that current is called as ICB0, which is very less, which is negligible. And in this case, both the junctions are reverse biased and hence the region of operation is said to be cutoff region. And now, here, now I have increased some uh, IE from 0 to some value. So, now what happens? So, here IC is equals to alpha into IE plus ICB0, right? So, now, ICB0 is very much less than 1, right? Very much less than 1 because it is of the order of nano amperes. Nano means 10 to the power of minus 9. So, it is very much less than 1. So, in that case, I can approximate this IC as alpha IE, where alpha value varies from 0.95 to 0.95. 98. That means alpha is approximately equals to 1 and hence I can say that IC is approximately equals to IE. So that is why if I increase IE to 1 milliampere, so I am getting the IC is also. So this is, this region of operation is called as active region in which both, uh, in which the emitter junction is forward biased and corrector junction is reverse biased. And now, if I increase, this is positive VCB, which is making the uh, collector to base junction reverse bias. If I apply negative VCB, what happens? Then collector junction will be forward biased. Is it or not? So, if I apply positive voltage to the entire collector, it reverse biases. If I apply negative voltage to the entire collector, it forward biases. So, as it is forward biased, and already the emitter junction is forward biased because I kept IE is equals to 1 milliampere. So, both the junctions are forward biased. This region of operation is called as saturation region. So, in saturation region, the current increases rapidly. What happens in saturation region? As both the junctions are forward biased, it acts as a short circuit because this diode is forward biased and this diode is also forward biased. So, it acts as a short circuit and hence the current increases 
rapidly. So that is why we have a rapid increase in the current when both the junctions are forward bias. So as both the junctions are forward bias because I am applying BCB as negative which makes the collector to base junction forward bias and I am applying some voltage so that I can get a E is equals to 1 milliampere. So emitter to base junction is also forward bias. So this region is called as saturation region and this region is called as active region and this region is called as cutoff region. To operate as an amplifier the transistor should operate in active region on switch saturation region off switch cutoff region so this is about the output characteristics of common base configuration and coming to the transfer characteristics of common base configuration so as we all uh, seen that when ie is equals to 0 ic is equals to ic b not right when ie is not equals to 0 not uh, not equal sorry ie is not equals to 0 that means any uh, higher value then IC is approximately equals to IE is it or not because alpha value is approximately equals to 1. So now the characteristic curve is drawn between the output voltage and the uh, uh, sorry the output current and the input current here what we are doing we are taking the both the currents here taking input current on x axis and output current on y axis. So here instead of starting from when IE is equals to 0, what is the current? The collector current is equals to ICB0. So instead of uh, starting from 0, it is starting from some ICB0. And there is a linear relationship. Why? Because IC is approximately equals to IE. Even though if you consider IC, it is said to be linear alpha into IE, right? So it means there is a linear relationship. As IE increases, IC also increases. So this is the characteristic curve. And from this characteristic curve, we can measure one parameter that is delta IC by delta IE, which is the amplification factor of common base configuration. So by keeping VCB as constant. So remember, input characteristics are drawn by keeping output voltage as constant. And even the transfer characteristics are also drawn by keeping the output voltage as constant. Whereas the output characteristics are drawn by keeping the input current as constant. So this is, <clears throat> so the current gain of a common base transistor is defined as a ratio of output current or collector current to the uh, input current or emitter current. Alpha is equals to delta IC by delta I. So some of the parameters we can calculate from the characteristic curves are dynamic input resistance. What do you mean by dynamic input resistance? Always you remember dynamic means change. Okay, so dynamic input resistance is defined as the change, the, the ratio of change in resistance is always, you know that R is equals to V by I, right? So dynamic resistance is, dynamic input resistance is defined as the ratio of a change in input voltage or emitter to base voltage because it is common base, right? emitter to base voltage to the corresponding change in input current or emitter current by keeping the output voltage VCP as constant, which is given by the mathematical expression Ri is equals to. So always remember dynamic uh, parameters are represented with small letters, lowercase letters. So Ri is equals to delta VBE by delta IE by keeping VCP as constant. So the input resistance of common base configuration is very low because the emitter to base junction is forward biased. Okay. Now coming to the other end of this uh, input, input resistance is always calculated from input characteristic curve. Input characteristic curve. Whereas the gain is calculated from transfer characteristic curves. Whereas the dynamic input resistance is calculated from input characteristic curve. And coming to the output dynamic output resistance, which is calculated from output characteristic curve. So, which are drawn between IC and VCB by keeping IE as constant. So, it is defined as a ratio of change in output voltage or uh, <coughs> collector to uh, collector voltage or collector to base voltage to the corresponding change in output current IC. So, with, um, uh, by keeping input current, that is emitter current as constant. So, R naught is defined as delta VC by delta IC 
where i e is constant so as we all know that emitter to base tension sorry collector to base tension is always reversed by us so and hence the output resistance is very high of the order of mega ohms now coming to the applications of common base configuration so common base configuration provides a low input impedance because emitter junction is forward biased and high output impedance because the collector to base junction is reverse biased and hence it provides high voltage gain okay so the common a common base amplifier provides low input impedance and high in output impedance and it provides high voltage gain and the current gain is very low whereas the overall power gain of the common gain common base amplifier is low as compared to the other uh, configurations of transistor and the common base transistor amplifiers are primarily used in the applications where low input impedance is required and the common base amplifier is mainly used as voltage amplifier or current buffer why i am calling it as current buffer because ic is approximately equals to ie there is no amplification of current is done here whatever the input current we are providing the output current is equals to that input current and hence we are saying that it acts as an voltage amplifier and current buffer okay there is no amplification of current taking place in common base configuration and this configuration is not most commonly used when compared to the other two configuration so this is about uh, the common base configuration and the characteristics of common base configuration we have discussed the input output and transfer characteristics of common base configuration and various parameters that we can calculate from the characteristic curves so that uh, that uh, that is all we have seen and the major concept of common base configuration is early effect so that thing you have to remember i hope this is clear to you all thank you one like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates